that's the box that I have for various scraps. Some of it's just strips or little bits of whatever. Some of them I have sewn together and just a little hunk of whatever. These ones I have over here. Let me just shift a wee bit here. I make these types of bits up on purpose by sewing strips together and then just cutting across them in different widths. For if I get close to a size I want, I can just stick this on the edge and then trim it to fit. I make 10.5 inch crumb blocks and 8.5 inch crumb blocks so far. When I have general little bits of what over, whatever left over, like if I'm just trimming up fabric or I have maybe a half square triangle that didn't work or something, I just chuck it all in this and then, whoops. <laughs> and as I go through this, I will sort through this and go, oh, maybe I like that or maybe I like that. And then I'll put it into that other box to be used coming up when I go do crumbs next. When I start a session of making crumb blocks, I go through that white, or that, sorry, that clear plastic tub, and I just find two pieces that have a straight edge and fit together. Like so. It doesn't matter what it is. Halloween can go with Christmas. The crazier, the better. As long as you have a straight edge on each piece, and they're pretty much the same size. You guys see that? Sorry, I'm guessing again with the camera. Put them together. And then just sew them, like so. And I'm chain piecing right now. I just sew a bunch at a time. And eventually it all falls off the back of my table and I get a big pile. So there, there's two pieces. Now it could be something like, there's part of a half square triangle that I cut up and it happens to fit pretty good with this lime fabric. So, we'll line those up. And sew them along. Another way to get started, too, is if you have a long strip like that. It could be a short one, it could be long, doesn't matter. Just a strip of something. And you start at, let's start at this end, and you just add stuff to it. It could be another little square like that. Just stick it on. I usually wind up pinning just so it doesn't flop all around and fall off, and then I don't know, oh shoot, was I going to use that with that? So stick a pin in it. And then it could be a little piece that's already together. So we'll stick it along that side because that looks flat there. Give yourself a smidgen in between so you can cut them apart with your scissors after. Don't like ram this one right up to here. See, I gave it a bit of room, especially since that goes there. So just line it up like that. So I'm going to pin. There we go. It could be several put together, like this one. That's some Harry Potter stuff, some army stuff a friend of mine had, and I think this, I did a did a mug rug for a friend of mine. Anyway, there's a nice straight edge right there, so we'll stick that on there like that. Ouch! And don't poke yourself with a pin, like I just did. So then you just feed it under. Oh, and look at that, I went on the wrong way. Well, okay, we'll go this way. So let's find something else. Let's see. I'll stop for a minute and come back. Now we got it working. So I have various things pinned along the length of this blue strip of flowery fabric that I had. So down here we'll start at this end, and this is a piece of a fish, some tropically stuff, odds and ends of whatever you have kicking around. That's how they do it. If you wanted to do your crumb blocks, you could do them all blue, or all Christmas, or whatever you want. It's your quilt. Do what you like. And don't listen to the quilt police. Okay, so as you go, just pin out. Don't run over your pins. Bad idea. Rex your needles. 
carry on, pull out the pin, keep feeding it along. Let me get a couple stitches onto this white here before I take the pin out so it doesn't move. And we carry on. Sometimes you run over a few seams and your machine makes that clunky noise. get the idea anyway, right? Pretty simple. I usually get way more than this, but I wanted to show you how it works. See, there's a join in there with a the thread. I usually just sew like mad until I get a big pile, but for the sake of showing you guys, I'll stop here. So I have my little snippers, and all you have to do is just clip off the thread like so. Get them apart. So you have a little few of them ready to go. Let me get these out of the way. So once I've got a bunch of these done and separated, then I do a round of pressing. Get that finished. Just a few steps at a time. Now here's my big long strip. Let me just grab my scissors that are over here. You get to watch me how I usually do this. This is how I work. <laughs> I try to organize so you guys can actually see it, but sometimes it's like, oh, oops, I forgot this. So, see here on the top of this one how I have space? I'll just take my scissors. Voila. That's ready to get pressed. So you just clip all the little bits apart. You could use your cutter if you wanted to. I generally just take my scissors and snip them apart. And when you go to press, generally I try and press toward the dark fabric, but sometimes there's too many seams. I don't know if I actually have one here that I can show you guys. No, not really. Oh, here, we'll do this one. Although it's going to be the dark side too. I guess I don't have an example. Sorry about that. Okay, anyway, so put it down there. Set your seam. A little heat just kind of scooches the thread into the fabric a little better. Try to get myself centered. I'm, I'm, there we go. Okay, so scoot that back. Give it a press. Put it aside. Those couple set. the one with the fish on it. Set. Done. And when you get to one that's got a bunch of seams, like I sewed this piece onto here just to make it bigger. There's so many seams on this side and so many seams on this side it doesn't really matter. But if that's the case when I'm joining larger bits together and the seams get a bit unruly, I'll press it from both sides. So let's just kind of press that back a little bit like that to start with. And then check it on the back to make sure it's not messed up. And just press and then sometimes I'll give it a little steam as well. Just to make sure. So let me get a few more of these pressed up, and then I'll show you the next bit. Everything that I just did the pressing on needs to be trimmed up. Now it doesn't matter if what you have is square or not in the crumb blocks. Most other quilting blocks, yes, but it doesn't matter. As long as you have a straight edge, or even a reasonably straight edge works too. But I'm a bit anal, so I like to make a straight edge. So if I nick that edge off there like that, that's now a straight edge. So that can go back into my bin of stuff. Let's see, I've got a bigger one here. Oh, this actually, this one's really kind of weird, but we'll make a straight edge. There. Straight edge. Back in the pile. How about this one? Now I need my bigger ruler. 
that straight in the pile. When you start getting bigger, like this one, this one could even be 8 inches now. Let me have a look at it. Because 8 inches is there. I could do it, actually. I could make this one 8.5. Let's do it. Okay, there's plenty that way. So let's, I don't really have a good corner, though. Let's do this. Make it there. Now this corner here is 90 degrees, so we flip it around this way and we put my eight and a half lines on the ruler on here, like so. So the eight and a half line, the corner of eight and a half is right down here in that right angle corner I just made. My eight and a half line goes there. And there. So if I hold it tight, nick that out of there, trim that off there. This piece I might actually use it. I'll put it in my pile. Now, now that I've cut it, this is going to be too small. That's going to be in a seam allowance. Once you, I get them sewn together, uh, usually for these things, I make like dog blankets, so it doesn't matter. You won't even see that. So there's another one ready to go, and we'll, actually I think I'll just trim to the edge of the dogs there, like that. Anyway, you guys get the idea. So, sew, press, trim up. Then I'll take what I've trimmed and other stuff out of the box and I'll put it together and I'll pin some stuff together and I'll do another round of sewing. Pretty simple process, right? Thanks for watching!